Hello, welcome to the Mark Janon Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, let's talk about AI now creating life. My goodness, a simulation of 500 million years. Let's talk about it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So scientists have created the world's first living programmable organisms called xenobots. So these xenobots are made from frog stem cells and are less than one millimeter long. <laughs> Is this like Jurassic Park? Consisting of 500 to 1,000 living cells, they can move in linear or circular directions, join together to act collectively and move small objects. Now. The creation process is as goes. To create Xenobots, researchers used a supercomputer with an AI evolutionary program to design thousands of potential life forms, frog skin or heart cells manually assembled using microsurgery tools. The heart cells in these assemblies contract and relax, providing more, mo you know, providing motion to Xenobots. So the capabilities and potential applications, you know, Xenobots have demonstrated several remarkable act abilities, you know, self-repair after damage, survival for up to 10 days using their own cellular energy, self-replication through an entirely new form of biological reproduction. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and like button if you're being entertained. Hit that subscribe button and like button right now. The potential applications include cleaning polluted oceans by collecting microplastics, entering confined or dangerous areas to remove toxins or radio radioactive materials, delivering drugs in the human body, advancing regenerative medicine. There are some ethical considerations, right? The creation of xenobots or, you know, or living robots raises several significant ethical concerns. You have unintended consequences like more advanced xenobots that live longer and can re you know reproduce could potentially malfunction go rogue or outcompete other species uh malicious use uh, xenobots could be weaponized for hostile biological purposes prohibited under international law sentience and suffering as xenobots become more complex they may require sensory and nervous systems potentially leading to sentience this raises questions about the potential for these organis you know organisms to experience suffering playing god right some argue that artificially created living things is unnatural and hub you know hubristic regulation and control questions arise about who should have access to and control over xenobots and whether there should be a moratorium until proper regulatory frameworks are established Environmental impact, while xenobots are considered more environmentally friendly than traditional robots, their long-term effects on ecosystems are unknown. In regards to moral status, the creation of programmable living organisms raises questions about their moral status and our obligations towards them. To address these concerns, experts suggest implementing biological kill switches in case xenobots go rogue, establishing clear regulatory frameworks and ethical guidelines for xenobot research and development, conducting thorough risk assessments and considering potential long-term consequences, engaging in open discussions about the ethical implications of creating living, programming or programmable organisms. So while xenobots offer promising applications in medicine and environmental cleanup, it is crucial to carefully consider and address these ethical concerns as research in this field progresses. There is talk that, you know, and questions that arise if xenobots could be useful uh, for medical purposes and Yes, in some ways, you have like targeted drug delivery. Uh, xenobots can be programmed to navigate precisely through the human body and deliver drugs directly to specific cells or tissues. This approach could enhance treatment effectiveness while minimizing side effects, particularly for conditions like cancer and neurological disorders. You have surgical procedures. These microbots can perform intricate, intricate surgical tasks at a microscopic level or scale, potentially enabling minimal invasive procedures and precise organ repairs. Diagnostics equipped with sensors, Xenobots could perform in two vivo diagnostics, detecting early signs of diseases like cancer or monitoring specific biomarkers. You have cleaning ar arteries, Xenobots could be used to scrape plaque from arteries, potentially treating cardiovascular conditions. Regenerative medicine, you know, their self, you know, repairing properties may allow xenobots to repair damaged cells, potentially aiding in the treatment of neurodegenerative uh, disorders 
N and Cherie's cancer treatment, researchers are exploring the use of xenobots to target cancer cells in various types of cancer, including lung, breast, and pancreatic cancer. Continuous disease monitoring, xenobots could patrol specific areas within the body, monitoring changes in cellular activity or the presence of pathogens. The use of xenobots in medicine offers several advantages, right? Including their ability to navigate the body with precision, reduce risk of adverse reactions and potential for customization to individual patient needs. However, it's important to note that while these applications show promise, many are still theoretical and require further research and development before becoming practical medical treatments. No, so what are the potential environmental benefits of xenobots? Because it's not all bad or whatever. There are several potential, you know, environmental benefits due to, you know, the, the unique properties of biodegradable programming or programmable, or, you know, programmable organisms. Again, we talked about it, microplastic cleanup. You know, they can remove microplastics from oceans and other aquatic environments, helping to address these pervasive form of pollution. Uh, you know, the ocean needs it, right? We need it. And there's ra radioactive waste removal. These living robots may be used to clean up radioactive waste, potentially offering safe alternative to current methods like humans, right? We, we don't want to be radioactive, right? Ecosystem monitoring, xenobots could be employed to monitor and maintain ecosystems, providing valuable data on environmental conditions. Biodegradability, unlike conventional robots made of synthetic materials, xenobots are completely organic and biodegradable, minimizing their environmental impact after completing their task. Uh, Non-contaminating, right, being made of biological components, xenobots can adapt to you know, organic environments without causing contamination, making them ideal for sensitive ecological applications. Detection of pollutants, these microorganisms could potentially be programmed to identify and process toxic materials and other substances of interest in, in, in environments that are physically inaccessible to classic, re, you know, robot. So while these environmental applications show promise, it's important to note that xenobots are still in the early stages of development. Researchers must carefully consider potential ecological risk, right? Such as unintended impacts on ecosystems or the possibility of becoming, you know, invasive species if replication is not properly regulated. So there is another form of AI evolution that's kind of related to this is the LEAF, L-E-A-F, which is learning and evo um, evolutionary AI framework. And it's basically a powerful evolutionary AI platform developed by Cognizant that goes beyond traditional prediction methods, right? It utilizes advanced evolutionary algorithms, deep learning, and distributed uh, computation technology to tackle complex business problems and optimize outcomes. Uh, the evolutionary, uh, evolutionary computation leave generates and evaluates millions of candidate solutions, mimicking biological evolution of discover uh, novel uh, strategies. Optimization, the, you know, the platform maps billions of outcomes and recommends optimal decisions using efficient evolutionary computation methods. You have the automated model generation. Leaf can automatically discover and optimize neural network architectures, reducing the need for manual design. So that is what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button if you are entertained, right? If you're entertained and educated, please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Also hit that notification bell so you are alerted when I upload new videos. Also, please let me know your opinions in the comments section below. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe and see you on the next video.